Talks, which is a production of the Ink Kitchen. The Ink Kitchen is an online resource, uh, Instagram, etc., all kinds of material and videos. So this session will be videotaped, and uh, you can watch it online. If you give your scan to the lovely Liz over there, uh, we'll let you know when it's up. We all, other sponsors of the show, Impressions, very generously is putting these kind of things on to make your experience here more positive and uh, not just you get sold, you get uh, information. Um, our other sponsors are Haynes and Hirsch, and they've uh, been sponsoring us from the very start. And one of our partners is Sanmar, and that's where Jason Murphy is. He's going to talk about transfers. He used to work as a national sales manager for Stalls, but he's now an independent rogue agent, checking out transfers of all kinds. There's going to be a lot of show and tell. We're going to hand things around. Don't steal them. And uh, Jason, take it away. Awesome. Thank you, Rick. So I just want to give a big shout out to the Ink Kitchen as well. So Rick is one of the experts that I reach out to when it comes to screen print, um, along with Brian Becker. Hi. Right. I'll probably one. Um, so at Samar, we have a group of people that our entire job is to do nothing but consult with decorators and help them solve problems. We have nothing to do with sales. Uh, we are a free service to you. It's the uh, Decorator and Digital Solutions Group. So. What I do today, which is super fun, I used to handle just decorators and uh, work with people like Rick. Now, I get to go and talk to all the manufacturers. I get to work with our merchandising team. I get to see all the fabrics before they come out, and we put them through rigorous testing, right? You know, heat transfer, screen print, dye migration. We are trying to bring the best printing fabrics to market, so having people like the Ink Kitchen, Poly One, all these people around to help is a huge thing. And your community that you put together with the Ink Kitchen, I tell you, people used to not talk to each other. And I really owe it to Rick and his crew to really start this community. And it means a lot that people are here and actually getting together and speaking and sharing. It's incredible. So thank you. Thanks. So we're going to talk about the world of heat transfer today. So I see everybody here. Everybody has a heat, heat press? Yes? Who has a cutter? Print and cut? OK. So you guys got everything. I hope I can show you something new. I think we're going to be good. Oh, you just bought it. Make sure you get my card so I can help you guys out later, too. Um, so we're going to talk about heat transfer. So as everybody here with heat transfer, who screen prints as well? All right, cool. I like that. You can't raise your hand. <laughs> I have a bunch of transfer machines. He does I'm a now. good screen printer, but I, I love transfers. So back in the day with heat transfer, heat transfer, you used to be able to seriously see a difference between a screen print and a heat transfer. Today, that is very much the opposite way. With the screen printed transfers you're going to see from Transfer Express, from FM Expression, Supacolor, um, 613 Originals, there's tons and tons of companies that are going to make amazing transfers. So we're going to start off with this one here, because this is Rick's favorite. This is the vintage print. And the vintage print comes from FM Expressions. This is a plastisol print. The cool thing with this is Rick takes this shirt and he's running all around the show seeing who could see if that was a transfer or a screen print. Experience on both sides, nobody could figure it out. It, absolutely impressive, so super soft. All the detail you can get, multiple colors, really cool stuff there. And then the same thing with, with your different uh, finishes. So metallic, who likes screen printing metallic? You like doing it? Wow. That takes a special person, because I hated screen printing metallics. So these are some different metallic prints. Again, these one here are 613 Originals. Fantastic transfers. Uh, 613 is a fairly new company. I think a couple years ago, we saw them in Atlantic City. And a lot of experience there, though, making some super cool stuff. This is the same thing. We'll just pass it around. It is a Plastisol print. So. That's the standard, right? What everybody's used to in the industry. Straight up, plastisol, yeah, we all do this. Now we're gonna get into some fun stuff. We're gonna get into some new stuff. Has anybody screen printed silicone? Yes. Rick has for sure. With so Brian. <laughs> so silicone inks are super popular right now. Nobody has done anything with them with a transfer up until last year. Uh, Instagraphic Systems came out with the first screen printed transfer that is made of silicone. What I want you to do when you get this, I want you to stretch it. So we've got one on cotton, we'll have one on poly, and we have one on the infamous camo hex. Okay? This thing bleeds, and it is ours, and it's something that we knew uh, going in. So when I was with Stalls back in the day, I remember getting this from my boss today, 
saying, hey, can you test this for us? I was like, sure, I got something that'll fix it. Uh, no, <laughs> I didn't have anything for it. Um, so the great thing with silicone, silicone naturally blocks dye migration. And a lot of people didn't realize that as they got into the industry, because it naturally blocks it, man, you can put this on anything. It's super incredible. And the stretch, I mean, this thing will probably outstretch the shirt. The shirt will actually stretch out, will not rebound, and the transfer will rebound and pucker around it. So it will outlast that shirt for sure. Let's see, those are the same. We're gonna put those here. All right, okay. Next thing I want to talk about, water-based. Does anybody print water-based? Ooh, we got them on this one. Yeah, I know you do. You do water-based? All right, excellent. So water-based is something that's super important today, and it's because of the sustainability and eco-friendly uh, initiatives that are going around. I know everybody's looking at it, and uh, we've gone down the rabbit hole with printers and heat transfer people and embroidery. What does sustainability mean, right? When you start going down that rabbit hole, oh my gosh, it goes deep. You're getting into every aspect of your company. The great thing is, is you can screen print it or you can now heat transfer it. You can buy these pre-done. Uh, you can have them done from FM Expressions. You can have them done from Transfer Express. Um, I think 613 has one now, but water-based transfers are ridiculously soft. They do come with bleed blockers as well. So yeah, just order them that way. So do your testing. Okay, it's very, very important. So there is another company called Supacolor. Guys, wave. They're over there. <clears throat> they actually have a transfer. You're selling these, right? Okay, good, because you should. They, they have a transfer that has three different marks on it, and it's three of their formulas, and it will tell you if this thing is going to die migrate. Because it's got their basic formula, their bleed blocker formula, and then their headwear formula, if I remember right. Super blocker. Super blocker, right? <laughs> and so it's a, again, it's a great way to actually get into and test a, a fabric before you go to print. So as you're ordering or your customers are ordering and it's something new to you, request an extra. Okay, it will save you so much time to actually test something first and before you get into production and go, uh-oh, this isn't working, right? So they're, they're a great op opportunity there and we're gonna talk about some more of their stuff later too. So now we're gonna get into some trends, what we're seeing in the marketplace. Has anybody applied a reflective? Yep. So reflective is gonna be really hot for a couple of reasons. Thank you. It, it's, it's hot in retail. Okay, so in retail, you're gonna see reflective little accents, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there, and they're not really big pops, but for safety, so that particular product is from Stahls, it's a 3M5807, right? So that is an ANSI certified reflective. It is expensive, so if you get into that, just know that up front, it's quadruple the price of standard heat transfer vinyl or maybe a little more, but when it's needed and people are looking for reflectivity, that's a fantastic product. Easy to cut, easy to apply, it goes on most things. Now that one there is also, that's a mixed media. You have a reflective and then you have a white. So that's just gonna give a little bit of tactile, you know, a little bit of different look and feel to the customer. So how many people have had their customers say, hey, you know, I saw this in Nordstrom, I really want you to look like that, right? And that's what we have to deal with as decorators is people come back to us and say, I want what I saw in retail. Well, heat transfer is making that easy. Okay, heat transfer is the fastest growing uh, decorating method that's out there. It is not slowing down, it's getting bigger, better, faster. So now we're gonna talk about the next trend, which is depth. People wanna have a little bit of tactile. They wanna have different looks, different feels. Um, so has anybody applied flock? Nobody done flock yet? Has anybody screen printed flock? Yes. <laughs> so back in the day, screen printing flock, when you screen printed flock, whatever color it was, your shop turned that color. And your lungs. Oh, it was horrible. You had this stuff flying all over the place. So now you can have CAD cut flock, which is this one here. It gives it that cool 70s soccer letter number feel. Or you can have a full color digital flock, like this one here. This is from Fiberlock. So Fiberlock makes these, Supacolor makes these. There's a, a bunch of companies that do this. And this is going to give you that cool faux embroidered look, and it is only heat transferred. A lot of the stuff I'm going to show you today, you're going to be like, what? That's heat transferred? Are you kidding? All right, so sticking with the tactile, a little bit of depth. This is from Pen Emblem. It, it, this is their Pen Flex. Stalls has a version called uh, Flex Style. I know, I think Supa makes one. There's a couple other companies that do this. This is just a heat transfer, and these things are getting super cool. Has anybody been by the Stalls booth today and seen their new hat press that has heat bottom and top? Go buy it. That thing is a game changer. If you do headwear and you do thick dimensional emblems, that is the game changer that will fix everything. 
So yeah, that one is a definite recommendation. Um, let's pass this one around too. So another trend, color on color. I think everybody's seen this before, you know, black on black kind of thing. This is super hot. And again, this is the dimensional transfer. <clears throat> super easy to apply when you're going on bags, if you're going on luggage, headwear, uh, even shirts and jackets, outerwear. That thing is super cool. Love that one. All right. Let's pass this one around. So this is one from FM Expressions. Has anybody ever done felt? You actually have to sew it on? Heat transfer version. Super nice. Again, it's tactile. It's got that cool retail kind of feel about it. You know, check them out. They're here at the show, too, and you can see all their really latest, greatest stuff. So and just so everybody here, thank you for coming to the trade show. I, I talk to people all day, every day, and it's like, how do you not know about this? When was the last trade show you went to? Oh, I don't know, 2002? And it's like, oh my gosh, you guys gotta come. So thank you for coming to the show, it means a lot. All right, sticking with tactile. <clears throat> this is a 2D PVC that's made of corn. So it is eco-friendly. This particular piece is sewn on, but it's one of my favorites, so I had to pass it around. These do come in a heat transfer version as well. This is from a company called Flex Systems out of Southern California in San Diego. Pass that one around as well, thank you. So the other cool thing, flip the hood over on that for me. The other good thing about heat transfer and these kinds of things is cool placements, right? So when you're doing other things, whether it's screen print, embroidery, laser, it's sometimes it's difficult to get into these little places. Heat transfer makes it easy. If you have extra platens or you have these small little uh, pads you can put in there, you can literally get into anything and put a transfer on it, right? So think about that as you're talking to your customer, they want something unique, think about unique placements. Also yeah. works on things that are lined. Yes. That's huge. Very much so. So did, has anybody screen printed a line jacket? And it shifts around, and <laughs> Jay back there, he's like, oh my gosh, you kidding? So uh, jacket clamps you can buy for a screen print setup. They are not cheap. They work really well, but they are not cheap. Uh, like Rick was saying, is you have something that's lined, you order a transfer pre-done, you stick it on the machine, you hit it, and you're done, out the door. You don't have to buy anything else, and you can still get the full color. All right. So heat transfer vinyl. I know we talked a little bit about that. A lot of you said, yes, you do it. Has anybody worked with this one? This is called silicone dye block from Stalls. So this is a 200 micron, and I know they also have a 500 or a 600 micron coming as well. So that is silicone. Again, a natural dye blocker, easy to cut and apply. Another great product, you should go check that out. Um, that is hot in retail, outdoor retail, extreme sports, you're gonna see that silicone, dimensional look everywhere. Yeah, this one here, probably one of my favorite products. This is Brick from a company called Caesar. Anybody use Caesar, Easy Weed, things like that? Great product, this is their Brick product. Now this one here, I'll be honest, it's a little bit harder to cut. Okay, it's, it's super thick. Um, let's see, so if anybody has cutters, does anybody use a flock blade? It's a thicker, a little bit different blade. If you get into doing stuff like this, you want to use a flock blade. It will help you actually cut it. And uh, easy way to describe it, it's kind of like the front end of a boat, how it comes out and it spreads the water as the boat's going through. That's the way this uh, cutter is defined or that, that needle is, it just spreads it just a little bit so it can get through and cut it. So dimensional pieces, we talked a lot about that. <clears throat> does anybody have a heat press that does under and lower heat? Good. One of the best things I ever bought. Hands down. So that right there, again, in this industry is a game changer. As we, as manufacturers of apparel, we're looking to bring up softer, cooler, nicer fabrics, tri-blends. Who likes tri-blends? Okay, they're beautiful. Are they easy to print? Mm, not so much, right? They're a little more difficult. They have require less heat. So the cool thing, again, with what we're able to do is we're able to get with all these manufacturers. We go to them, we say, guys, here's this new fabric we have coming. We're trying really hard to get the heat threshold up. What can you guys do to meet us in the middle? Has anybody noticed that the temperatures of heat transfers are coming down and down and down? There's people out there that are doing it at 240 and 250 degrees. That's a game changer. If you still are using some of the older stuff that may go on at 320, 330, 340, some is 365, if you have an under lower heat press, if you burn the inside of the garment, who cares? <laughs> They're not gonna see it, right? So as long as you're not scorching the top, we're okay. There's actually a hack for that uh, also. If you don't have one and you find something that scorches no matter what you do, you can very quickly tack it in place and then 
turn the garment inside out and also scorch the yep. inside instead of the outside. Yep, and absolutely. if it's a thick fabric, sometimes you have to do a little bit longer time, et cetera, but it's a way, uh, I mean, we had a job where there was just absolutely no way I remember. not to scorch the, the shirts, so that was the only way we could do it. But the bottom heat transfer press is great, and the silicone one you're talking about. Yep. So with your bottom heat press manufacturers out there, I know you, you have stalls, the Hotronics machines, and then George Knight also makes one as well. So both companies have an option. So get by their booths and check them out. They're really, really cool. And again, I, so I had my own business for a number of years. I really wish they had those when I had my business. That would have made life so easy. I would have done so much more transfer. Um, so next trend I want to talk about, this is a fun one. The first samples I'm going to show, these are sewn, and I'm showing you these for a reason. Has anybody done laser etched leather yet? This is hot. This is the fastest growing trend right now in retail. You're going to see laser etched leather on everything, okay? This was my favorite territory manager sample we ever did just because it's just cool and it's a bar. I just think it's awesome. So we'll pass that around. <clears throat> you're going to see this on headwear. You're going to see it on uh, aprons. You're going to see it on shirts and outerwear. So let's talk about how we applied these before. So it's sewn on, right? Embroider machine, yeah, sure, you could do that if you're really good at it. Who has sewing machines? Okay, you guys sew. Who has a sewing machine to do hats? Anybody have a post-style sewing machine? I didn't either, right? So now you go like, wow, what are we gonna do now? We got all this really cool laser etched leather. I wanna put it on a hat. I wanna put it on something that doesn't require. So I'm visiting my friends over there at Supercolor one day. And I said, Rom, is there a way that you could make a, a leather transfer? Just something that, could, that, that I don't have to sew on and put a fake stitch around it too. He goes, I don't know, we'll see. Next time I visit, I have this. This is a heat transfer, faux leather, laser etched with a fake stitch around the end. Do this they call cool. it the Jason Murphy? This is the Jason Murphy leather, right? <laughs> okay, just checking. So that one there is one that I was so excited. Um, as soon as I saw that, I started calling everybody. Um, and, and soon thereafter, I would imagine some other people are gonna try to come up with this. The biggest problem was leather as a whole, the back of leather is fuzzy, right? How are you gonna get an adhesive to fix to that? And I don't know how they did it, and they're not gonna tell me, but they did it. Uh, super cool, and I think this is gonna help change the game of heat transfer using the leather. It, it's gonna be super hot. All right. Uh, let's see, what are we gonna get into next? Ooh, patches. <clears throat> All right, does anybody do patches? No, yeah, heat transfer patches. You'd be surprised how many are available in today's marketplace. Uh, there's a company called Southland Patch and Promo, Pen Emblem, CBF Label, uh, Dr. Patch. I mean, they're all over the place and they manufacture patches that are only heat transferred. So this one, first one we'll pass around, is a woven patch. So if you've seen a woven label inside of a shirt, that's a woven patch with a, a marrowed edge around the outside that you just heat transfer. So when people want that cool look and you're sitting there going, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? I don't wanna put all those stitches on. That's gonna take 35, 40 minutes on my embroidery machine. Is it worth it? Order patches. This is a super easy way to do it. We put some on um, cowboy hats, I believe, recently too, because the stitching would have uh, wrecked the hat. Right. Yep, doesn't look good at all. Uh, this one here is a sublimated twill that was laser cut around the outside, gets you the full uh, color look as well with that heat transfer. And the good thing is, is they laser cut the edges so it won't fray on you. So it'll stay the same way each and every time. All right, so we're gonna get into kind of the last set of what we're gonna talk about, which is full color digital transfers. Okay, there's a lot of different ways to do this. Okay, you've got, uh, it started off with your rolling Versacams, your Mamakis doing print and cut, and you had the outlines around it, and you're like, oh man, okay, that's cool, but it got outlines. You get better at it, you figure it out. From there, you have our friends over at Oki come up with some incredible printers and paper that work together, where you laser print a transfer out, and you marry it up with some adhesive, and you apply it. Um, from there, now the manufacturers in the industry, your Supercolor, your Transfer Express, are manufacturing what's called a hybrid transfer. Are you, anybody familiar with the hybrid transfers? Okay, so what they're doing uh, to keep it very, very high level is you're gonna get a digital print back to a screen print ink, an adhesive with bleed blockers, with, uh, oh gosh, uh, so just an example. Again, I'm gonna point back over there again. These guys are making waves over at Supa. I went to them about this. I went to every manufacturer. I said, I need something for waterproof garments, right? Is anybody else better to heat transfer waterproof garment? Okay, waterproof is designed to come off. It's designed to repel the adhesives or any kind of moisture. 
So these guys over here, I said, hey, I need something for this. Went to everybody else. They came back with an option. So now we have something for waterproof and water-resistant garments. I still recommend you test. Make sure you get it checked. Some of them, the waterproofing is so heavy that literally nothing's going to work. But for most of the stuff you see today that's a polyester shell with a water-resistant uh, coating, most of them has enough fabric to make a mechanical bond. So definitely options today. But so now we're going to pass around some samples. So this first one here, this Bora Bora, this is, again, Supacolor. This is a full color transfer. They make a transfer designed specifically for hats. Okay, what I really like about this is when, if you've transferred a hat, a lot of times it can sink down in the seam, right? That's difficult. Nobody wants to do that. It doesn't look very good. Then you're like, oh, I need a five panel hat, but my customer doesn't want a five panel hat. So it's that give and that take. They also have them with bleed blockers to go on trucker caps and things like that. This one here is a full digital transfer that's a print and cut. This one here came from Stalls. This is on their dye blocker. Um, this is hot right now. These big, full size prints going on trucker hats, this isn't going away. This is something you're going to continue to see. I'm going to pass that around the other side there. Those are the same product. So, this is an example of a five panel hat. Okay, not everybody likes them, right? But the design makes it. Thanks, guys. Really cool. Pass out and round. <clears throat> All right. Let's stay with print and cut. All right. So those of you who have print and cut systems, if you would hold this one up. So if there's anything I can tell you guys that have print and cut systems, everybody complains about the hand feel, right? Oh, it's so thick. It, it, it doesn't work. If you can work some negative space into your design, like this one here, how they cut out the little rectangle or little um, squares, that right there uh, got some of the most noticeable. People talked about it because it was still soft, it was still digital, but we put some negative space in it and it made a really cool, soft, stretchable piece, right? And it still breathed. It didn't feel like you had a big, heavy patch on you. So that's all in the art and your design and how you put those kinds of things together. But that is a digital transfer. Um, that is a material from stalls. You'd have to, I mean, it was called foil. I it was something else now. So they have a new name for it, but you can stop by and ask them about it. All right, those of you with uh, your digital printers, anybody ever tried mixed media? So this is a combination of heat press and embroidery. So everybody's like, oh my gosh, how do we do this? Right, this is a lot to put together. So it's actually not that hard. If you put the embroidery down first, it's super easy to line up that heat transfer, right? But think about it. If I put the heat transfer down and I hoop it right, how hard is it to get the embroidery in the right place? It's really not if you put it all in the same design, right? Recommendation from me, do the embroidery first, line up the heat transfer. It'll work really well. That gives you a really cool look, looks great, people like it, and again, it's tactile and it's got a little bit different feels. All right. Yeah, we'll end with that stuff. All right. So sticking with full color, we saw this over in Atlantic City like last year. Yep. And this is when 613 came around. Does anybody like doing polypropylene bags? No. <laughs> no. Everything melts this stuff. It, it is a nightmare for the most part. But these guys have got a transfer that's going on around 250 degrees. Polypropylene can take 250 degrees. Not much more, but this is a great example of how you can do that. And I actually found this one in Berlin at FESPA. So I was walking around. I saw this transfer. I'm like, wow, that's incredible. And ju just a little fun thing. As you're walking around Europe in these shows, you're going to see technology that you've never seen before. And I happened to come across the booth that was making these. And it was a heat transfer machine that looked like a screen print carousel. And it was, you put a bag on, and it automatically did everything else. Placed a transfer, peeled it, went around, did this and this and this, comes out the other side. I'm like, wow. Oh my gosh, how many can you do an hour? He goes like 500 units. I'm like, that's incredible. What else can you do? Although the one I got back home, the, it peeled off. <laughs> yeah. I said, but what else can you do? It's coming. Goes, it's coming. He goes, nothing. I said, that's all you can do is bags. He goes, well, those are robotic arms. That's all they know how to do is go grab a bag. I'm like, wow, that's cool. How much is it? Half a million dollars? We won't see that in the States. That one won't make it here. But cool technology. Um, let's see. CAD cut products. I want to talk about a few trends that we're seeing. So this one here, this is Caesar Easyweed. I know a couple people said they use Caesar products. 
Uh, this one here is probably hands down one of the easiest products to work with. And if uh, the term easy weed, those of you who understand what weeding is, I hated it. I paid my kids to weed stuff because I just, I did not like doing it. This is incredible, easy to work with. They have easy weed, easy weed stretch, um, a ton of other products, super cool, lots of colors. All right, performance wear. So this one here is Stahl's Premium Plus. Anybody use Premium Plus before? This is the stretchiest I have ever seen in the industry. Great re rebound. Um, you do you want to do some testing with it as well if you're going to do anything that's going to potentially die migrate. Just do some testing because there is wiggle room with heat transfer vinyl. You don't always have to use their exact recommendations. So when people give you, you need to apply this at 300 degrees for 15 seconds, right? That is never making 300 degrees. It's making somewhere around 260 to activate the adhesive so they go down in the fabric and hold. They're giving you the fastest, most efficient way to make it there. There is wiggle room back and forth. And if you ever have a question or you're having scorching problems, call the manufacturer and say, do you have alternate options? Do you have a lower setting that I can maybe add a little more time to? And they'll always guide you with that, give you the best way to do it. All right. We're coming to the home stretch here. So I made this actually when I worked at Stalls, so this is a long time ago, but it was about four years ago, um, as a sample. So this here is a reversible jersey. Has anybody ever done these? Yes. Do you like doing them? No. Oh, they're terrible. Screen printing these kinds of things? Oh, they, it just it is a nightmare because you got to put it on, print it, flash it, hope the hole's clear, right? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use a heat transfer that's going to cover the holes. I can do the inside and the outside. And with today's machines, that you don't actually have to lay it on there. You can thread it like the, the uh, Stahl's Fusion Press. Man, you can boom, put it on, spin it, do the other side, take it off, put it on, spin it, and do both sides. Super easy to do. All right, fun stuff. We're going to go back to Caesar here. Everybody see chalkboard? You can literally write on this with chalk. Yeah, this says Rick Roth, because he's the man. <laughs> But yeah, this is something, so we did. And a, you can uh, erase it. <laughs> and you can erase it. We did this at the uh, promotional product show last year on a tote bag out of a, uh, one of our uh, trend presentations from Vicky Ostrom. And people could write what meant something to them. It was so cool to see people walking around the PPI show with their tote bag that came to her seminar with their one word that meant something to them. It was cool. It was powerful. So that's something really neat you can do there. There's ink you can print. Yeah. And it's no fun either. Yeah. So this is a great option. Uh, let's see. We covered those. Okay. All right. So home here stretch. we are truly getting into the home stretch here. So foils. Anybody do foils? Foils is hot still. And, and don't ask me why. It's kind of like rhinestone. It keeps coming back and coming back and coming back. I think it's I told you, Jason, does. crows and people like shiny things. Yes, <laughs> for sure. So this is a heat transfer version. Okay, this one here, I came from Stalls. It's a metallic material. Now, going back to some of the other people, so like Oki over here, you can utilize an Oki printer to actually use their uh, paper and adhesive and apply foil on top of it. So again, another really good option there is to utilize their printers for foil. So it, has anybody bought into the Oki system, just out of curiosity? Nobody yet? You should go look at it. If you're doing small runs, one-offs, a lot of color, uh, they have a really unique system that full color prints and a laser printer that has white toner. So you get the color white, you get the backer on it, and you can actually create really cool transfers. So another one cool to look at, and it's got a lot of good uh, variable things you can do that they can all explain, because I think it goes on and on and on. All right, this one here is a, so if you know foil, this is a screen print foil. This is available in a million patterns. I mean, my gosh, you can, you can go to these foil companies and get just about anything you can think of cool thing is you can do a screen print with this, but you can also buy adhesives from companies like Stahl's or Caesar and, and cut out the adhesive, apply it, and then put the foil on top. So you don't have to screen print it if you don't want to. And I'd say that most of the screen printers I know that do foil, it's not ridiculously hard, but it is time consuming and a lot of them are starting to do it on their heat transfer machines. Oh, another one that I thought was really going to go away. Let's go with Gotti first. Glitter. Oh, yeah. This stuff is still around. They're making more colors. 
Um, so the funny thing is I called Caesar and I'm like, hey, I need a, a sample that I can take to the show to show glitter. And they made this. I was like, wow, thanks. And I think the show was in Vegas, so it worked really well. But glitter is super hot. And again, screen printers, do you like to screen print foil or uh, glitter? No. Yeah. It's kind of like reflective. Nobody wants screen print reflective. I right? printed a lot of reflective. I know. Absolutely impossible to do. There's a lot of new versions of glitter coming out from all the different manufacturers. It's getting softer. It's getting stretchier. Um, I do like being able to CAD cut it because you can do easy personalization and one-offs. So another great product. All right, and the last one. Although it was applied too low. <laughs> yeah, it was a little low. We, we can give them a little, little crap for that. So this one here is, again, a mixed media. So great thing with heat transfer is you can mix this stuff around, and, and don't be shy to do it. So this one here is a cool mix. Uh, this one is a gloss screen print with the transfer vinyl in the middle. The great thing is, is once you run this through the, the dryer and you're already printed, you take it out, it's super easy to line it up. So you can add in those little pops there. All right, now we are truly in the last couple of things I want to talk about. These are the ones I was telling you you're going to go, that's a heat transfer? All right, so there is a company out of the East Coast called Lion Brothers that I met uh, a couple years ago. I knew the name. I really didn't understand what they did. That is a heat transfer. This blew me away. They were showing me garments that I'm looking at. I'm like, oh, that is so embroidered, and that took a million years to do. This is a heat transfer. This one here is also a heat transfer with gloss and little different pops around it to give it dimension like we talked about earlier. Dimension is super hot today. Everybody seen the champion stuff floating around? It's super hot in retail today. Did you know that 90% of their stuff is heat transfer, right? It truly blows me away what can be done with the heat transfer machine. Um, I would say that the most important thing you can do as operators and owners is come to shows. Listen to these talks. You know, we're, we're here to help you. We're here to guide you. Um, if anybody wants my card afterward, please come and see me. I'll be happy to help you out. If you want to know somebody on the show floor, I can introduce you. Uh, it's what we're here for. All right. I'll mention again, we're, this is all recorded. And uh, if you want to know when it comes out on YouTube, Liz can uh, scan your badge and we'll let you know. Put you on our mailing list. Uh, won't sell your name or anything. Um, how about a couple questions, maybe? Anybody have a question? Where's uh, the chalkboard stuff from? That's from Caesar. So uh, Caesar doesn't sell direct. They have uh, distributors all throughout the show floor. Um, check with one of them, and they're, they'll have what you need. Other questions? All right, I want to thank. Oh, OK, go ahead. Backpack. That was the uh, one with the black dimensional emblem, uh, pen emblem out of uh, Southern California. Not Pennsylvania? Well, they manufacture in Southern California. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, other questions? We'll try to have this talk um, up on YouTube and try to have a reference in all of it for uh, photos of them and where they came from. Because that was a lot of information in a short time. Really well done. How about a hand for Jason Murphy? Thank you.